Hello again, it's Jason Santiago with Modern Stone Technologies, and I am here to have yet another installment of our product spotlights. Uh, this is a, a series of videos where I'm going to go over our entire product line eventually and uh, make you guys as familiar as possible with the products that we manufacture and that we distribute uh, so that you have a better understanding on what it is that you're using, uh, not only for the sake of your knowledge, but also so that you can better educate your customers the more confidence and, and the better you're able to talk to your customers about the processes and the products that you're using, the more confidence they have in you to hire you for you know their big projects. So uh, I'm gonna go over all of our line eventually. I, I last week I did our product preserve and I got some really great feedback on that. So I, I do appreciate that and and it is always my pleasure to to create these videos for you guys to make sure that you understand what it is that you're using and the best way for you to sell it uh, to your potential customers. So today I'm actually going to be going over um, a category of products. Instead of separating each one of these individually, I am going to kind of categorize them all together. And that is going to be the category of the abrasives and the polishing compounds that, that we manufacture. So I've got a, a few of them and I will basically start with uh, some of the more aggressive approaches, some of the more traditional approaches uh, that you can take for for natural stone restoration, homing, polishing, etc. Um, and I will kind of move on to some of the more innovative products that we have and, and some of the more exciting stuff and, and the stuff that I think that a majority of the contractors that I deal with are using out there on a regular basis. So uh, without further ado, I will start with your uh, traditional resin uh, bond diamond. Uh, these have been being used in the industry for for a very, very long time, much, much longer than even I've been in, in the industry. Um, this essentially is exactly what it, it, it is described as. It is a diamond uh, abrasive that is uh, in a resin matrix. Uh, essentially, the way this works is as the diamonds are being run under a floor machine over the natural stone or concrete surface, the resin is uh, getting worn away and it is exposing uh, diamonds to basically um, uh, give you the result that you're looking for, whether that result is going to be etch removal, damage removal, scratch removal, that sort of thing, uh, or uh, bring it up to a, a honed polish, or I'm sorry, a honed finish or a, a polish finish. Uh, these diamonds are capable of, of doing all of that. Now, I'm not going to actually get into the process of how these types of diamonds are used. Uh, that is for um, not even another video. That That is more of something that I like to uh, show you guys during my hands-on course that, that I give here in Arizona. Uh, the process of, of using these diamonds is, is a little bit more in-depth than, than what I could do uh, during this type of video anyway. So uh, so these are the uh, three-inch spirals or vortex diamonds as, as uh, we call them. Um, normally you're buying sets of five of these, four or five is, is how contractors are normally running these. And of course they can be used uh, by themselves under like a hand grinder or something like that. So um, this is going to be the hardest abrasive, uh, being that this is actually a diamond abrasive. Uh, this is going to give you your, your best results, but there are also challenges involved when using this type of approach, uh, which again is a completely different video. So we don't want to uh, drag on too much about about some of those challenges. Of course, you guys can always call me and, and we can discuss those in more detail. Uh, but that is the first type of abrasive that uh, we, will, we will go over. Um, uh, the second is going to be the Modern Stone Technologies Home. Um, this product comes in grits of 150, 400, 800, and 1200. Uh, honing powders were actually really big back when I got into this industry back in 99 um, due to some of the challenges that, that I, I kind of mentioned with the Vortex Diamonds. Uh, this was an approach that you could take to kind of help get away from some of those uh, some of those challenges. So basically the honing powder is an aluminum oxide so it's much softer than uh, a diamond uh, or even a tin oxide that, that you might find in some other uh, comparable honing powders or, or polishing compounds. Um, being that they're a softer abrasive they are going to have better results on softer stones uh, like a Cantera or, or an Italian bluestone or a, a travertine uh, limestone 
beyond that, I, I tend to lean away from, from using Honey Powder. So for marbles and granites, and especially granites, I, I don't even really consider using a Honey Powder. So um, Honey Powders do have their, their place in the industry still. Uh, normally though, it's going to be as a, a finishing step. So um, back when I was doing this stuff for, for a living, back, like I said, in, in 99 and early 2000s, there were times where we would be taking multiple steps with the owning powders and, and um, quite messy, uh, quite labor intensive, a lot more time consuming than, than using some of the other approaches that, that are out there now. Um, but, uh, you know, this was the technology that was out there. This was what was kind of the, the standard in the industry. And, um, and, and we, we still manufacture them. Contractors are, are still using them to, to even out floors and, and to work around some challenges that, that can, that can be, uh, in, in uneven surfaces. Um, but that's the honey powder. So hopefully you guys are not using these as often as I use them uh, back when I was doing this type of work. But, uh, but again, they, they still do have their place in the industry. Um, and, and if you guys have any other questions uh, about the process of, of using honey powders, again, I'm not gonna really get into the process uh, during this video, um, but you, you can always call me and we can talk about how to use honey powders, when you would use honey powders over some of the other types of abrasives that, that we're gonna talk about um, and, and how they might uh, be beneficial to add in your arsenal. So again, that's uh, that's the hone. I'm using the hone 1200 just kind of as my my example. But again, it does come in 150, 400, 800, and 1200 grits. If you guys don't know what the different grit numbers represent, or, or you don't know when you would use one grit or another, um, that is something that I'll probably end up discussing in the video. But that is something that you definitely want to become educated on. If, if, if you're unfamiliar with the stone restoration process, unfamiliar with the grit levels and, and that sort of thing, uh, that's something that you certainly want to become familiar with, especially if you're going to start adding natural stone to your arsenal, which uh, in my opinion, of course, and I am slightly biased, but is a, a great, great uh, service to add if you're already out there doing carpets or tile and grout cleaning. Uh, natural stone is, is becoming way and way more popular. The more affordable it becomes, the more common it's becoming. Um, and, and that means there's more stone that needs to be restored by you guys. So, um, so that's the Hone, uh, Hone 1200 in this uh, case. Um, the next product I'm going to go over is the Jazz Polishing Powder. Uh, jazz Polishing Powder is uh, used for one thing and one thing only. It's, it's used to polish the stone or, or can be used on concrete or other calcium carbonate type surfaces. Um, it can also be used to remove very light etching, etching that's caused from something mild, like let's say vinegar or of course uh, uh, chemical damages from cleaners and that sort of thing. Uh, it's not gonna remove really heavy heavy etching or anything like that, but if you have some light etching, the, the jazz polishing compound will do a really good job at, at taking care of that. Um, but this product is designed to, to create a high polish. Anytime your customer wants something that is going to pop, you know, they, they'll say uh, that mirror-like reflection or that wet look or, you know, however they want to describe it, the jazz polishing compound is the one that, uh, that you are going to finish with. Now, this product is only used on calcium carbonates. You wouldn't use it on something like a green serpentine or a, uh, uh, a granite, of course, you, you wouldn't use it on or, or anything that does not have a, a calcium component to it or a calcium base to it. This is used for marbles, travertines, limestones, concretes, those types of surfaces. And I really love this product. Um, if, if you guys have been with us for, for many, many years, you know that we've gone through some different types of polishing compounds and, um, and, and we've manufactured and distributed different polishing compounds. And, and this is the one that we kind of settled on. And, um, and it's been a while now. It's, it's been well over 10 years that, that we have settled on the jazz. And, and the reason why we like this formulation so much is not only is it going to give you just an amazing result just about every single time, but it is extremely user friendly. Um, these types of polishing compounds uh, have an acid base to them. It's an oxalic acid base. If you know anything about natural stone, you know that calcium carbonates are sensitive to acids. So 
when you have a polishing compound that has a very high level of oxalic acid, the chances of you etching the surface during the process or running your slurry a little too hot are a lot higher. And if you're doing a large project and you're not really familiar with the product that you're using, you run that thing too hot, you will literally etch the floor as you go and you'll be finished and you'll extract everything and you'll have a nice polished area and then you'll notice little swirl marks sometimes or little splash marks, splatter marks of where your polishing compound actually etched the surface. Um, now those fixes are, are typically very easy to, to fix. You go back and, and you can typically run over them with a watered down version of your polishing compound to get those out. But if you're doing a large area and you have a lot of that happening, you could spend an extra you know handful of hours or even maybe an extra day going back there and, and fixing those spots. So um, the great, great thing about this is it gives you that result from some of those higher uh, oxalic acid powders, but it is extremely user friendly. I have actually never etched a flow with this unless I was doing it on purpose to show contractors what it looks like. Um, I know some contractors have left little etch marks here and there from this product, but it is a lot less likely to happen with a product like Jazz than it is to happen with some of those other, uh, what I refer to as like hotter powders or you know uh, powders that have a higher acid content to them. Um, so that's the Jazz, and, uh, and, and we have videos on how this product is, is used, and of course, I, I, I won't, um, I won't talk too much about it, but I do have a hands-on two-day course that I give in, in Arizona. Um, and, and of course, we use this product often in that to try to make you guys as familiar as possible with the process, the polishing process using a product like Jazz. So uh, this is Jazz. Um, the abrasive that I decided to save last is uh, probably one of the more innovative products that we have. Um, and, and when I say innovative, you know, there, there are other similar pads to what I'm holding here, um, but this one is, is different uh, a few different ways. So this is the Evolution Pad. Uh, the Evolution Pad, basically what we've done is we've tried to, um, we've tried to combine the, the effectiveness of a resin diamond with some of the uh, mobility or movement that you get when you're using a honey guard. So uh, what we've done is we've actually have a, a resin, a, a watered down resin. It is embedded with actual diamonds, the same way that our, our resin discs are. And those diamonds uh, and resin are sprayed into the fiber of a pad. And the reason why this is beneficial is with a pad, you have some movement. So when you're dealing with a floor that was not installed completely evenly, you have that movement and, and you're going to provide a much more even finish on a floor that otherwise might not cooperate if you're using some of the different approaches like the resin diamonds, for instance. Um, so you can see, or I don't know how well you can see, um, I'll try to get this up here as, as close as possible without screwing anything up, uh, but this is a very fine resin. It's actually sprayed very deep into the pad. Uh, and, and with that, you get a very even and very, very similar finish to the actual diamonds. And, and that is something that is missing from a lot of similar pads like this that are out in the market. Um, a lot of the pads out there on the market are going to give you kind of a, a more of a honing powder finish. They're not going to give you that pop that, that you're looking for when you're using diamonds. And the Evolution Pad does that. It gives you that nice pop. Um, the Evolution Pads, this is a home pad. Uh, they come in four different grits. Uh, you've got your coarse grit, you've got your hone, you've got your satin, and you've got your shine. Each pad obviously has uh, a, a different um, a different result or, or you use them to achieve a different goal. Um, now you're not having to use all four pads for the process. I know there are some pad systems out there where they say to start out with this pad and finish with this pad. Uh, each pad is designed to give you a very specific result. So depending on what you're doing, you might not have to worry about scratching or you might not have to worry about heavy foot uh, uh, traffic or, or traffic pattern rather you might be going in there to, to do like a maintenance polish or, or just to kind of even a floor out after installation so you're not having to go through an entire process when using the evolution pads essentially you are going to use the pad that you need um, sometimes that requires more than one step but but it's not like you're you're using a pad system uh, you are using these pads as as needed so um, 
Another good thing about this pad is the amount of square footage that you're getting out of it. In my experience, some of the um, diamond impregnated pads that, that I've used in the past, you're going to get, you know, anywhere between five and, and, and six hundred feet per pad, uh, which is not terrible. But uh, with these pads here, especially with some of the higher grits, you're getting upwards to 1,200, 1,500 square feet out of out of some of the higher grits. Now, for the more aggressive grits like the course pad, uh, ones that you're going to be using to remove uh, heavy scratches or, or etching or, or foot traffic, those ones are going to last a, a little bit less, you know, right around uh, 400, 600 uh, square feet. Um, but for these guys, you know, home pattern up, you're looking at a thousand plus square feet. So you're getting a really nice, even finish. You're getting a very close to diamond result, which is, is really, uh, really another great thing about these pads that you're not getting out of some of the similar pads. Um, and, uh, and that's really it. So, uh, again, I've got other videos and, and I'm always uh, available for discussion to talk about these in more detail. Uh, and, and I'm, uh, of course, always happy to do so. So I'm going to wrap this conversation up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, my contact information is always in my videos. And I always make myself super available for you guys. So please don't ever hesitate to, to call or write or, um, you know, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube or email. Uh, I, I, I will always get back to you guys. So uh, thank you so much for listening. I know this was kind of a longer conversation, but I hope you guys got something out of it. And uh, I will look forward to uh, talking with you guys in the future. Future. Thank you so much.